Hey guys, Mr. C here. So I'm going to do a couple energy conservation problems to help illustrate some of the concepts we've been talking about in class. So the objectives of this lesson are, we're going to solve for all the types of energy at the beginning of a problem. We're then going to solve for all the types of energy at the end of a problem. And then we're going to apply the law of energy conservation <clears throat> for a, a free fall problem and a spring, a spring problem to analyze for the free fall problem, the speed of the object at the bottom, and for the spring problem, the height a spring or a little toy will rise to. So let's go, go ahead and jump right into it. So here's the first problem. A ball of mass two kilograms is released from a height of 10 meters. So over here, here's my uh, height of 10 meters, and it's a ball of mass two kilograms. So they want us to find the total energy at the beginning of its release, the total energy as it approaches very close to the ground. So what they mean by that is just before it hits the ground, but, but not actually hitting the ground yet. And see the speed of the ball just before it hits the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and label this. So for part A, the total energy at the beginning of its release, here is A. B is right as it approaches the ground. So this is B right down here at the bottom. And then C is also right down at the bottom. So from what we learned from class, we know that there's different types of mechanical energy. We have spring, spring energy, which is a potential energy. We have gravitational potential energy, and we have kinetic energy, moving energy. So at A, we have to think about what types of energy does it have at A? Well, obviously, we don't see any springs involved, so springs out. If it's just released, it's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy. So it's pretty clear at, at, at A that all we have is potential energy, gravitational potential energy. So what we have here is the energy total equals gravitational potential energy. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to my reference table, and my formula for gravitational potential energy is PE equals MGH. So my energy total, what they want us to find here at the very beginning, can be found by, by multiplying the mass times gravity times the height. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that. So energy total equals potential energy, which equals a mass of 2 kilograms times gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared, times a height of 10 meters. I'll let you go through the calculation, and we'll go ahead and rate it. Energy total equals potential energy gravitational. This is at the top, remember. And we get an energy of 196.2 and the units of energy are joules. So again, we just solved for the energy at the top of the release, and what we showed is all of the energy, so energy total, equals potential energy due to gravitation. Now what we want to find is the total energy as it approaches very close to the ground. So that's right down here, really, really close to the ground. Well, looking again at our three types of energy, we see again, there's no springs involved. So there's no spring potential energy going on. If, it, if it's very, very close to the ground, we see that for our gravitational potential energy equation, PE equals MGH, that H would be a very, very small number. So as it gets really, really close to the ground, we see that the potential energy becomes zero. So it has to have some kind of energy. And what you guys know from dropping balls all throughout this year is as it gets close to the ground, it speeds up. So if it's moving, we know it must have a kinetic energy. So for part B, the energy total this time equals kinetic energy. And what we know from energy conservation is energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So whatever energy we start with has to equal whatever energy we end with as, as long as we don't consider things like air resistance or friction. Therefore, the kinetic energy at the bottom has to equal the potential energy at the top. And again, that equals 196.2 joules. OK. Now on the C. So looking back up at it, they want us to find the speed of the ball just before it hits the ground. So again, that's speed. That's V. So we just found that kinetic energy equals 196.2 joules right before it hits the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into our kinetic energy equation. 
So we have Ke, kinetic energy, equals one half mv squared from the reference tables. So we just found that our Ke is 196.2 joules. And that equals one half, the mass was two kilograms, and we have v squared, what we're trying to solve for. So to solve for v squared, I divide over by a half, I divide by two kilograms, notice that the one half and the two cancel out that's another problem solving strategy and then i take the square root so i get v equals the square root of 196.2 joules and then taking the square root i get v equals 14 meters per second all right and that does it with that problem so moving on to the, the next problem number two Let's imagine one of the toys on my desk has a mass of 0.2 kilograms. You guys have all played with these numerous times, the little pop-up toys. So this is kind of an idealized drawing of one of, of one of my toys, but it works. We see um, there's still the suction cup, and we see that there's a little spring attached. Notice how my pop-up toys don't have the spring, they just have the suction cup, but the suction cup itself, or the little rubber piece itself, acts as a spring. And when you bend it, that, that you, you are compressing the spring. So, let's imagine the spring has a mass of, I'm sorry, the toy has a mass of 0.2 kilograms and a spring constant of 150 newtons per meter. A force is then applied that compresses the spring 0.1 meter. So, when it compresses the spring 0.1 meter, that's that compression distance x. I'll go ahead and I'll label this as m. And remember the 150 newtons per meter, the spring constant, we label that K. So we're going to find the potential energy stored in the com compressed sp spring. So again, this is a spring problem, so we should look at our spring equations. So potential energy stored in the spring equals 1 half K X squared, where K is the spring constant and X is the distance that it's compressed. So that piece right there. So, I'll go ahead and I'll plug it in. Potential energy stored in the spring equals 1 half times 150 newtons per meter. Remember to always uh, plug in your, your units as well. Times 0.100 meters squared. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'll solve through it. And I see the potential energy stored in the spring is 0 0.75. And again, the units of potential energy, joules. All right, that's A. Now moving on to B. B, they wanted us to find the maximum height the toy will rise to when the spring goes off. So let's think about this. When the spring's compressed, so when it's compressed that distance, it has a potential energy. When the spring's released, that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So that makes this, the toy pop up into the air. As it pops up, gravity slows it down, Eventually, the toy reaches the maximum height. So, maximum height. What, what do we know about the toy's speed at the very top, at, the, at its maximum height? Yeah, that's right. We know its velocity is zero. So if its velocity is zero, and the spring is no longer compressed, all of the energy, so the energy total, has to be in term, stored in, as gravitational potential energy. So. What that means is we start out with spring potential energy, so our energy total, our energy to begin with, which equals our energy total, starts off as spring potential energy and then is converted into gravitational potential energy at the very top. So you see here, the spring potential energy at the very beginning, so I'll say at the bottom, equals the gravitational energy potential energy at the very top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that spring potential energy we just solved for and plug it into our gravitational potential energy equation. So what I have here is 0 0.75 joules, which was our total energy, equals the spring, oh, I'm sorry, the gravitational potential energy, which equals mgh from our reference tables. So 0 0.75 joules equals well, what was that mass again? 0.2 kilograms, 0 0.200 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, there's gravity, 
times h. And now it's just a matter of taking 0.75 and dividing by 0.2 kilograms and then also dividing by 9.81 meters per second squared. Doing that, I find h equals 0 0.62 meters. So the spring toy, after it's compressed, will rise to a height of 0.62 meters. So somewhere around a foot and a half or so, which is a, a little weak compared to my, to my springs, but good enough to illustrate the problem. All right, hope this helped you guys out with some energy conservation problems. Stay tuned for more.